Adventures. My name is Mary and I'm the co-owner of Two Foot Adventures, an ultralight backpacking store. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the differences between sleeping bags and quilts. I'll go over a couple different types of quilts, a couple different types of sleeping bags, and hopefully it'll help you to decide on which one is the right for you. Okay, so many people these days are starting to use quilts and if you're not familiar with quilts, the primary difference is a hood. Okay, so here I've got two quilts on this side and I've got two more traditional sleeping bags on the far side. So you can see both of these have the hood that you're used to seeing on a normal sleeping bag and neither of these do. Um, so what I wanna talk about then are the quilts first and the quilts usually are a little bit lighter than the sleeping bags and part of that is because of the elimination of the hood. Um, a lot of the small um, cottage companies are starting to make quilts more so than sleeping bags. Quilts can be made faster and easier and are usually a little bit less expensive than sleeping bags due to the more advanced manufacturing that's required to sew the hood on a high-end sleeping bag. This is the Jaxar Better High Sierra Sniveller. It's the first one we're going to talk about. And a lot of the companies that make quilts actually don't put enough down in them. So Usually if you're hiking someplace that's going to be chilly, a 20 degree bag is not necessarily going to be warm enough, even though the temperatures you, you'll see on the trail may only be say 30 degrees or so. If you're a very warm sleeper, a 20 degree bag for a male could be okay, but most women are going to need a 10 degree or even a, a zero degree bag on the Pacific Crest Trail if you're hiking um, starting either in March or April, or if you think you'll be finishing the trail sometime in say mid to late September, or occasionally there are hikers still out on the trail in October. So the PCT is primarily where we've specialized over the years, but we have experience um, with a whole range of seasons and a whole range of products. So one of the things that you'll notice about all of my sleeping bags and my quilts is the horizontal baffles, okay? So the baffles you can see here, they're the sew lines. And these baffles are about maybe eight inches, I believe on this one. Um, the, the spacing of the baffles helps them to stuff more um, down into there and give you good even loft coverage. When you have really small baffles often, then everywhere you sew, if there isn't enough loft in there, they're not gonna keep you as warm. One of the primary advantages of having the, the horizontal baffles, which if you start looking around at a lot of the smaller companies, they're not necessarily doing the horizontal baffles. Um, they're doing more vertical baffles, but there are some obstacles with that. But before we get into that, I want to show you the advantage of having a horizontal baffle. So with any kind of down bag, I highly recommend that when you pull it out of your backpack each day, you take time and you fluff it, okay? So fluffing it would just be pulling it out and shaking it. So on this one, this is a quilt and this quilt is one of the simple quilts, meaning that it doesn't have zippers, it doesn't have um, Velcro here. Some of the Velcro can get stuck on your thermal bottoms. So, so I would stay away from anything that has Velcro as a closure, at least, especially on the area where you're sleeping. But um, many of them just have snaps or have other loops here so you could use something like shock cord or any kind of cordage if you wanted to to kind of keep it closed over you now many people will use their quilt and they will wrap their quilt around a sleeping pad okay i encourage you no matter what quilt or what sleeping bag you decide on to never wrap it around a sleeping pad the reason is is if you put it around a sleeping pad you're going to potentially pull it too tight Sleeping bags are most efficient when they are laid across you, but if you pull it around you, you can, you can see it would um, take away from the ability to loft. If your sleeping bags or your quilts can't loft, they can't keep you warm, okay? So I would just try to steer clear of something that goes around your sleeping, your sleeping pad. Additionally, when you go around your sleeping pad, you often end up 
with dead spaces on the side of you where your sleeping bag or your quilt is going around you. And that dead space means it's gonna take you longer to warm up in your quilt or your sleeping bag. So by taking your quilt and just wrapping it straight around you, you're going to stay warmest that way and you're also going to warm up faster if you get in your quilt and you're already cold. So as you'll notice here, again, that there is no hood on this. So with something like this, one of the advantages of quilts that people really, really like is the ability to lay flat, okay? Some people have really hot feet when they sleep. With this particular quilt, you can vent the bottom. So if you vent the bottom, then your feet obviously can have a little bit more air, but that also means that if it's really cold, you could get a draft on your feet, okay? So that's just something to be mindful of. With these quilts where you can vent the bottom, oftentimes you can also open them completely up and lay them flat. So this one has a clip here in the middle. So when it's really warm and you're hiking um, in the peak of summer, maybe the, the nighttime temperatures are not getting down to the 20s and the 30s and even into the 40s. Um, and so you don't necessarily need your sleeping bag to be super, super warm but you still need a nice cover. So in that case, you can open up this quilt to be completely flat. So that's another one of the reasons that people opt for the quilts is because of their versatility and because of their lightweight nature. This particular quilt is like a super quilt because it also has this in the middle, if I can get this totally open, okay? so. If you decided, if you're somebody who likes to hike 20 and 30 miles or more a day, and especially if it's in the summer, then a quilt like this might really, be really good for you because you wouldn't necessarily have to bring a down jacket, is you can wear this one like a large poncho. So now you can see that I would just be toasty when I got into camp. I could totally wear my quilt um, or wear my quilt in the morning when I first get up and I'm getting camp ready, uh, maybe while I have my breakfast, as long as I'm careful. Um, so this is, like I said, kind of a super quilt. It does tricks. Um, a lot of hikers have found that they, that they really like this. They think that maybe they won't use it. And once they do start using it, they fall in love with that. Okay, so we've talked about the most basic type of quilt, which is, like I said, one where the foot box opens. Um, I think that this is primarily what you will see when you are shopping for um, quilts. Now, as I mentioned before, every time you take out your sleeping bag, you want to fluff it, okay? So when you fluff it and you're using a quilt, most often, when you're sleeping in a quilt, you actually tuck the seam side underneath you, okay? So when you tuck the seam underneath you, then you're fully covered and your sleeping pad is providing the warmth and the insulation underneath you. And you still have the edges of your quilt maybe tucked under the edges here. Um, and so in shaking your quilt and putting all the down then on top of you, which is what I highly recommend you doing, especially if it's a cold night, you can see as I shake this, how fluffy this part gets. And that's gonna be the part, again, that will go right on top of you. So that's why the horizontal baffles are by far my favorite. Um, the other reason that I really like the horizontal baffles compared to vertical baffles, which you'll see again on some of the other quilts, are imagine if you have vertical baffles and you go at night and you shake your quilt. Then the loft that is up here is going to potentially slide down. So I see many, many hikers every season who come into my store because they're cold. And there's two reasons, maybe three. There's three reasons. One is because their sleeping bag or their quilt was never warm enough. They didn't buy one with a high enough rating. Um, women usually run about 10 degrees 
colder than men. So where men might be able to get away again with a 20 degree quilt, most women are going to need a 10 or a zero degree quilt. Okay, so that's the number one reason they didn't buy one warm enough. The number two reason that they're cold is because the rating. A lot of the cottage companies are not following the standards that are set out to maintain um, the temperature rating, okay? So like our cumulus bag over here has been tested through international standards so that it is a comfort of 20 degrees. It has a lot more down than many, many other sleeping bags that might even be rated to a zero or a 10 degree, much less a 20, okay? So this is a true 20 degree bag, meaning at 20 degrees, you should be able to lay there and be comfortable with just say your thermals and you're not going to be shivering to death and think that you're going to die. Okay, that might sound a little extreme, but there are many hikers who don't sleep well on the trail because their sleeping bag is not warm enough. So that brings me back to my third point on what makes hikers cold. Also, is, um, is going with those vertical baffles that may not have enough down in them to start with, then often you can take some of those, those quilts and hold them up to the sunshine. So put the sunshine on the opposite side and then you hold up the quilt and you will be able to see spots in there that have no down or very, very little down. So the shifting of the down in the vertical baffles also leads to hikers being cold. And sometimes once down gets wet, especially on the trail, it can be difficult to redistribute that down. Okay, so whereas if you can shake it side to side, the only place it can go is on top of you, beside you, or under you. But no matter what, if you shake it and you shake it vigorously, it's all going to be on top of you. Okay, so that is the introduction to our most basic quilt here. Again, that's the Jacks Are Better um, High Sierra Sniveller. This is a zero degree, and we actually had two extra ounces of down added to it just to be extra extra certain that any hiker who came to us who purchased a quilt would not be cold i don't want any hikers to ever be cold okay so we've started having our own quilt made and this quilt what i chose to do differently than say the jacks are better is i opted for a sewn foot box Okay, so unless you sleep really, really warm, I highly recommend you get a sewn foot box because so many times our feet end up being the last thing to get warm and we're pretty worn out um, at the end of our day. So laying in a sleeping bag being cold or laying in a quilt being cold, waiting on your feet to warm up is not great. Plus the PCT has a lot of wind. So if you have drafts coming through, which is great for reducing condensation in your tent, um, we don't want any kind of drafts to be coming through your foot box. Okay, so I opted for the stone foot box on this quilt. Another thing is I found on my PCT through hike that I rarely would do anything more than take one foot out. I would never lay my bag um, completely flat and it's because I'm not a super warm sleeper. Um, so I opted for a half a half zip here, well, it's a half zip here, so a half um, sewn at the bottom because it also helps to reduce the overall weight um, by reducing the weight of the zipper. Certainly, the zipper adds weight, and many hikers are trying to reduce all the ounces that you can since you need to carry this gear for so long, whether you're on a week-long trip or you're going on a six-month long trip. Just carrying extra weight is never comfortable. So anytime we can reduce weight, we try to do so. So this one, as I showed you, has a zipper. It goes down to about there on me. And these are, this is a, a standard length bag. So it's a little over six feet. And again, it's got the horizontal baffles, which I am a huge fan of. And all of these have a cinch cord at the top. So with the cinch cord, you can get in them and you can wear your beanie to help keep your head warm. Um, you could also wear a buff if you um, prefer, you wanna wear something around your neck. Um, if it's a warm night, clearly you don't need a buff or a beanie. Some people will kind of go down inside of them and leave the side open so that they can breathe out this way, but then they have the versatility and the lightweightness of still having a, a quilt. Um, and like the other one, again, when you take it out and you fluff it, 
then you have all this down on top of you. This is a zero degree bag and it weighs in right around one pound and eight ounces. Okay, so hopefully you're getting a, an idea of the quilts and how they work. Um, with this quilt, clearly with the zipper, I believe it's a little bit warmer than the other ones. I think you'll stay plenty warm in either of them. Um, but if you move around a lot, some people prefer to have a zipper, but they are a little more narrow. With them being narrow, it also means that they warm up quickly. Oftentimes when people are new to sleeping in mummy bags, especially an ultralight mummy bag, they can um, feel like maybe they might be a little bit claustrophobic. Um, what I can tell you is when I first started sleeping in bags, like in a mummy bag, mine was a lot wider but it also took me a lot longer to warm up so the longer i've been using sleeping bags the more narrow i've gone to so that something really fits me so that i warm up very quickly and i've been very happy with that and instead of thinking about oh if i'm cold i like to ball up the main thing to remember with these is that when you ball up you can actually pull the sleeping bag up you don't need yourself to be a ball you ball up with the bag and you pull the bag up um, so that hopefully gives you a little bit of tips for sleeping in quilts versus sleeping bags, which many of you are probably already familiar with. Um, if you are new to sleeping in a fitted bag though, and you're not sure you're ready to go to something that could be as narrow as say, um, the zippered quilt, one of the other really nice options is to go to something like this. This is the Climate KBS 20. And with this bag, it actually hugs you. It is an elasticized bag, so it will stretch with you. It allows you to move very, very freely, but, and it still warms up quickly because it snugs back to you with the elastic. Um, so this bag is great for people who are not sure, one, that you wanna spend, say, four or $500 on a high-end sleeping bag, or even a high-end quilt. And it's also good for somebody who moves a lot, who likes a lot of freedom, but still wants something to be warm. This bag is definitely going to weigh more than anything else up here. It weighs right around two and a half pounds, but it does have that advantage of being very elasticized. So it's a very warm bag. It's a little bit heavier, um, but it's great for a lot of people. Um, it comes with a draft collar up here. So that's one thing in most sleeping bags, you'll see a draft collar, which allows you to cinch that up around your neck to stay warm. And you can also cinch the hood down around your face. So many people really like that. Um, they like the comfort, they like the security of that and it helps them to sleep good. This one also has a very light draft collar um, that's here at the zipper. So this bag is just a great all around entry level bag. Um, not very many companies. In fact, I only know of Climate and Mont Bell that make a bag that um, elasticize. There might be other ones on the market that I'm not familiar with, but these are really great bags for, like I said, somebody who is not ready for a more traditional mummy bag. Okay, and lastly, we will get to the Cumulus sleeping bag here on the end. And the Cumulus sleeping bag, these bags come in a right zip and a left zip. So what that means is that if you like to snuggle with your partner, um, you can zip your two sleeping bags together. We've sold a number of these that way to um, couples hiking who just like to be warm, who like to snuggle, but they need their space. Um, and they choose to get two of these bags and zip them together. And they have reported how extremely happy they are with their purchases and how warm they sleep and just that they're really, really comfortable. So this bag here, it is from Poland. Poland has the number one down in the world. It's ethically sourced, it's from free range geese, and it is very high quality. They have been doing this for a very long time. Um, Cumulus makes expedition level um, gear. I'm wearing a Cumulus jacket, Cumulus sleeping bag. So the Cumulus sleeping bag has all the bells and whistles. 
it has the same uh, cinch cord up here around the top see I can cinch this down so you can cinch that around your face which is really nice it's also got the draft collar here with again another cinch if you'd like to do that and this bag can unzip all the way almost to your feet okay and then it comes all the way up it's um, if you're somebody who just likes to vent your feet again you can vent from the bottom so a lot of people really like that feature it has a very generous um, draft collar here along the zipper and what makes the cumulus bag really really unique is the fact that it has trapezoidal um, shaped baffle so if you look really carefully at this you can see you have a skinny baffle next to a thick baffle next to a skinny and a thick and so forth these baffles are actually trapezoidal shaped, so they're shaped like this so when you put them together one on the top will be narrow and then the next one fits up against it like this okay so with that kind of construction you don't have the top to bottom there's no way for you to not have down covering every bit of you okay so that's what makes this bag really stand out from its competitors is the fact that it has that trapezoidal very unique construction as well as the fact that it is ethically sourced um, polish down um, this bag comes in right around two pounds. It has more down, as I said before, than most of the other down sleeping bags in its class, okay? It's got more than the quilt. It's got as much down as any other quilt even weighs. Um, this 20 degree uh, sleeping bag is going to be warmer than most of your zero degree quilts, okay? Because it's got so much down in it. And yes, it weighs a little bit more, but it has to weigh more to get all the down in there, which is going to also keep you warmer. But again, if you're a, if you're a really small, petite female, you may choose to go with something that is very narrow cut, a narrow cut bag. You're going to warm up a lot faster. Um, this bag here, it is suitable for somebody up to 190 centimeters which is a little over six foot um, take a minute to put this one back okay so I hope you've enjoyed um, learning a little bit about the differences in sleeping bags and quilts what features might be important to you and hopefully you're better equipped to pick out a sleeping bag or a quilt for your next trip if you have any questions feel free drop us a line below we'll be answering all of your questions if you have ideas on other videos you'd like us to make be sure to leave those comments down below as well and as always we have our online store at two the number two footadventures.com. You can shop 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Two Foot Adventures. And until next time, I hope you have a great adventure.